goal is to, to remove as many blind spots as we can. So blind spots are uh, is sight without measurement. So I have nothing to play off of. Because I can't see something. It's, it's, so there's something visible, but I can't locate it. I can't measure it. I can't, you know, like, like if there's something back here, I can't, you know, I can turn, you know, you know, should tell you, I can, you know, certain cars are made where the blind spot is even worse. So, you know, you'd be trying to look, and you still think the coast is clear, and you still almost cause an accident. Because it's, it's I, I, my measurement is off of how I can process it. So we want a, a, a lot less blind spots. Because, you know, especially growing a church, you know, I'm not going to say I get on people's nerves, but I challenge people. That's probably a better way to put it. And the only reason there's so much of a challenge is because people are walking around blind. So then I, I go, hey, so you want to keep tripping over that idea? No, I, I, I don't never trip. I ain't tripping over nothing. You know, I, I, work, I walk good. But, but do you notice you keep stumbling when you get to that point? No, it's, you, listen, it's not a stumble. It's just my coolness. You don't understand. But the whole time you're like, okay, but I just want to, do you see? Hey, buddy, do you see that? And then the whole time, listen, man, I can see so I agree that you can see. We're talking about what you can't see. That's what's in your blind spot. So your pride is telling you, I can see. I'm intelligent. I have wisdom. Look, I got skills. Look, I'm doing this one thing over here. Nobody can do this like me. But God is saying, could you take a peek over there? Could you tap into what you can't see? That's what the holdup is. That's why it doesn't keep moving beyond that level. Because what you're taking for granted, sometimes it's the discipline, sometimes it's the diligence, sometimes it's the commitment and the consistency to your community and your relationship with God. Most of the time that's what it is. But, but when you can't see it, you say to yourself, what's wrong with God? He need to get himself together. By now, he should have gave me what I desire. What kind of God would make me? I'm a nice person. God said, could you look over there and what you can't see? Would you open yourself up to receive what you can't see? Or are you going to keep playing like a little boy, a little girl, and be in denial? Spend all your time proving what you know, not trying to find out what you don't. Know. But I know this. Hallelujah. Okay, what you know has gotten you to this point. What you know has got you stuck at that point. Why don't you try to find out what you don't know and, and elevate beyond it? But the temptation is, but I know this and I know that. And you spit it out. And I know this and I know that. We all agree you know that. Now, can we find out what you don't know? Because that's what's holding the acceleration. You're not seeing what you can't see. And too prideful to open up to see it. Let's, let's go to uh, Psalm 51. See, that's, we have to watch. Go to Psalm 51. But that's why we have to watch. Uh, be more careful in what relationships we expose ourselves to. Because you expose yourself to the wrong relationship, they hurt you. What, what happens normally when you get hurt, you go to protect yourself and you go hard. That's that vault you put around you. And a hard heart goes blind. See, so you, you, you just don't want to expose yourself to people that's going to not, not handle your heart right. Um, because you'll never get to uh, evolve it into what you're supposed to be. Scripture says this in John chapter 8. It says, uh, uh, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Some verses say, set you free. We talked about that the other day. Um, but either way, liberty and freedom come from knowing the truth, being intimate with the truth. And we talked about this again the other day. Uh, there's some people that wasn't here. Uh, the truth is finally out, finished product. So the truth about the caterpillar is that it really is a butterfly. Thank you. Somehow, at least one person helped me out. Wasn't y'all there when I thought that? Yeah. All right, so 
Uh, so, 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 right now, a lot of us are living in truth. We're not at finding out. We're not finished by. Some of us are still caterpillars. And the tough thing is, we, you know, use your imagination. I, you know, I'm, I'm a kid at heart, so I'm a storyteller. So I can just picture caterpillars growing up, and some of them was just happy to be big caterpillar on the tree. So their whole world was, yeah, ain't nobody like me on this tree. But then the other caterpillars didn't settle for that and decided to evolve, to go through the pain of the cocoon, bust out and then get wings and start to fly and see the world. So, so, so it, we're, some of us are like that. We're still running around on the tree when God wants us to fly. But you're going to have to go through the cocoon. It's going, you're going to go through that pain, that process. Patiently get through, let all that food squeeze, squeeze into your wings and fly. You see that? Uh, so we, we got to get to a point where we're embracing the truth. Uh, Psalms 51. And, and, and actually, when you get a chance to read through Psalm 51 for yourself, it's, it's about David. And David, who needed some help to discover he had a blind spot. You know, he basically, you know, he, he, he basically set up. Uh, one of his uh, soldiers to get killed so he could get with his wife. Um, and he's going business as usual. You know, King David. I'm a man after God's own heart. I'm just rolling. And then one of his, one of his, his, uh, one of his men had to come to him and tell him a story. He said, what would you do if somebody did this to one of your people? Oh, that person needs the, the most strictest punishment. Yeah, but that person is you. And so David said, oh my God. I didn't see that. And so what he said at that moment was, clean me a clean heart, Lord, renew a right spirit in me. Cleanse my heart. Purge me with hyssop. Wash me that I might be clean. Right in the snow. And he said in verse 6 here, uh, it says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. In that deep area, in that treasure hidden under the vessel, I gotta go deep in my inner man. I gotta embrace the truth, the final reality, the real deal. I can't run from the truth because if I'm running from the truth, I'm living a lie. But I live living that lie with some swag. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm living a lie, but I look good. No, no. What's up? What's up? Yeah, what's happening? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to keep cracking jokes. I'm going to keep blinging what I have so you won't see who I am. Ooh. Wow. Wow. I'm going to run from the truth because you, I, you may see some cracks. It may end up being a sincere relationship where I have to display the cracks. I don't want you to see the cracks, so I'm going to keep, keep moving, keep playing. I'm going I'm to highlight, emphasize, focus, and passionately state that which I know or that which can keep a diversion so you won't see my cracks. Because I don't want to embrace the truth. I may grow. I may heal. I, I may actually tap into greatness. But who wants to do that when I can just hide and hang out with this lie? The scripture says in Romans chapter 1, they turn the truth of God into a lie. And start doing that which is unseemly. Men with men and women with women. And it says God turned them over to a reprobate mind. He turned them over to themselves. He said, man, at this point, you guys have run it so far past me, you will never even see me. You're going to turn my truth, my final reality into a lie. You're going to change what I handcrafted and fearfully and wonderfully made and corrupt it and say this is what God has created. You're going to create your own idol and say I designed it? You remember when they came out of the children of Israel came out of Israel and Moses took too long on the mountain so they, they said, you know, so Aaron was like, you know, I'm a goldsmith you know, give me an earring and stuff like that and he created a golden calf. 
Okay, he, he, I mean, he has skills. So, okay, so he created a golden calf, you know, you know, maybe, you know, put it up on a mantelpiece or something. No, he made this stupid statement. This is the God that brought us out of Egypt. You just made it! Now, now that might sound funny, but that's how we live. We'll create a, a, a job or profession or a hobby and we'll say, this is what's going to bring me out of bondage. Because wow. God ain't enough. My power, my might will bring me out. Because God ain't enough. Don't let the devil deceive you in thinking God ain't enough. Once he has you thinking God ain't enough, You'll search for so many things that will never quench your thirst. You'll, you'll leave out of a love relationship that empowers you to love and to believe and have faith in God, and you'll cross over into a lust relationship. And the, the number one thing about lust is it's insatiable. It can never be satisfied. Actually, the name for lust is called more. You know, years ago, I did drugs. I called it more. And get around my friends in Jersey, and be like, Hey, can you, uh, let's do some coke. No, it's not coke, it's more. Because the more you do it, the more you want. It never satisfies you. And that's what we have to do. Come back to a loving relationship with God and start to start to get back to fulfillment. Give him a shot. Oh, I mean, look at look at all you've invested in getting nothing. Getting less than. Just getting more depressed, more frustrated. How about just 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 taste of some of God. I mean, a real God. Which is going to take intimate relationships. You know, when you meet the young lady and young man, do you, do you like not call? And then you like talk to him like every like five months? Maybe you can talk to him four or five o'clock in the morning and all types of stuff. Do God get that type of time? When you get, when you, when you reconnect with God, do you, does he get that type of connection? Lord, I just want to spend time with you. I just want to talk to you. Man, I just, I just can't go to sleep, man. I just love talking. I just love hearing your voice. Does he get that? Let's get back to that. How about that? Let's, let's, oh, I'm sorry. In some cases, let's try that. <laughs> I didn't say no names. I, listen, I'm telling y'all to be you. This is me. This is the me that God designed. So, come on. Now, of course, all the, you know, Challenging messages are not accommodating, so you know people aren't comfortable, so that's not attractive all the time. But I'd rather you leave out of here with the truth or uncomfortable and have a wonderful life than just to accommodate you and say something cute, just to keep you coming. But the whole time you, you're struggling and you're suffering and you're in it. That's not what the goal is. That's enough. Stand your feet. It's 12 30 or now. That's enough. Did you get something today? Yeah. Something? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, will you come back? Will you come back? Please don't leave us. <laughs> uh,